Well, they said every good thing must end. I don't really believe that because I don't believe this is the end of it. I want to say that this meeting is coming rapidly to a close. And by 3.30, in the next 25 minutes, we'd all be heading out to the dining area and some folks would be traveling back. I'd like to say a few things and as we close this meeting off today. First of all, I want to thank the Haitians that attended this meeting ministers and saints I wondered at one point in time when I heard some of our North American brothers were not coming what would happen in the meeting but it turned out to be a Haitian meeting I think this was a Haitian meeting and for years that I've gone to Haiti, I have always appreciated Haiti and the saints. I always commended the ministers for their modesty, their tranquility. When I attend these ministers meeting in February. And today, I want to say thank you to Brother Antoine Brother Moses and the other brothers who combined their efforts together to put up in hotels over 60 of their saints, not putting that responsibility in the local church. Transport, we did not have to worry about. And so you don't see that normally. I want to say I appreciate that very much. This local church do want to say thank you. And then the staff of this church, we're not a lot of us, but the few that labored and worked extremely hard uh, did not have enough time to pray so much. But can you move God only by prayer? You see, he's in control. And he will protect his people. And I normally hesitate to say the presence of God is in the service because we can be carried away sometimes with emotionalism. But at the conclusion of this meeting, I want to say we felt a very precious presence of God. And I appreciate God for that. These songs that we're closing out this meeting with, how can I ever forget the many a times I got up early in the morning, slip into this church before anyone else was awake, and right here on this second step, I will sit. And when I sit there, I don't have a shopping list, but just a heart of gratitude. I find it very difficult to tell God all the things I want Him to do. But I sat there and appreciated Him. And he has met me many a times while I'm there. I appreciate God for his goodness. I appreciate every one of you coming to this meeting. Every visitor. And those that contributed for the missionary offering. And as we close off this meeting. I relate to the men of this Bible. See this book would have been a very slim book had it not been for the many examples of scripture. Not all wonderful, beautiful examples, 
but men that were up sometimes and down sometimes. It made a difference. One of my greatest champions in this book is the Apostle Paul. Oh, I can list a lot of champions. I love Moses. See, what I see in Moses and some of these other men, I don't know how many people see that. How would you appreciate a man like Isaiah that would show up and the first thing he tells you, you have iniquity working in you, an ox is smarter than you, and, and an old donkey is smarter than the children of God. He looks, he says, the whole body is sick, from the priest to the people. See, that's the way I like to see a prophet. Not a good, not an advertisement in the city to telling you come and get rich, but a man that comes to tell you strong words. You know, you read that first chapter of Isaiah, and how can you compare him with the men of today? He said, he says, you rulers of Sodom. Who was he talking to, Sodom? No, he was not. He was talking to the rulers of Israel. But he called them the rulers of Sodom. And he said, you people of Gomorrah. If somebody tells me that, I'll have a problem with that. But I love Isaiah. He ended up being martyred. History tells us they cut him in half with a saw. Who did it? The ungodly? No, apostate religion did it. I love the man like Moses, who was a prince in Egypt. And the scripture says, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. An opportunity that every individual would want to hold on to in today's world. To have a politician love you. To have a politician appreciate you. Is what a lot of people want in this world. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And you know the amazing thing about Moses? He says, the scripture went on to say, esteeming the reproach of Christ. You mean Christ in the Old Testament? Yes. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. What a man. See, that's those are the men I love. Now these little cowboys they have on television. And then my greatest champion of all, the Apostle Paul. When we look at this New Testament, half of it would have been not written had it not been for a man like the Apostle Paul. I appreciate everything that was said in this meeting. The reflection on how suffering and trials are necessary. What would a man like James, why would a man like James introduce his epistle by saying, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials. Why would Paul says, I glory in mine infirmity? Why would he glory in suffering? He said, he says, um, the things that were gained to me, those things I suffer loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He says, I do suffer loss and count them but dung. See what an age we're living in. We're living in an age 
where what Paul flushed preachers today want. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He said concerning the righteousness which is in the law, he said he was blameless. He says of the tribe of Israel. He was a powerful man. Recognized by the Pharisees. But he gave it up. For Jesus. When he said I come not to you with the excellency of speech. Or with enticing words. Of man's wisdom. It's not he was stupid. It was not that he had a limited vocabulary. But he saw there was a greater need. For the power of God. In the service. Than just fancy speeches. See there is a difference with illumination. And education. Education is good. But for preachers to be used of God, God must illuminate their hearts and their minds. It must be a light from within. It must not be, it must not be a reformation, but rather a transformation. And that is why we have a future today. Oh, we had a wonderful spirit. But you know, am I satisfied? Make a guess. Never. I'm never satisfied. I'm pleased. But never satisfied. You know what will make me satisfied? Is when we come in here one day. And the band doesn't play. And something falls into this church. And like the day of Pentecost. There were all. The two. Every single individual. No spectator. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all spoke in towns. And they all honored God. You know what was the result? The community got saved. See Jesus said that to his disciples. He says when you receive the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. And you shall be witnesses unto me. See this fellowship lack witness. Oh I like to hear you talk. You like to hear me talk. I come with a lot of information and I give you and you give me and we talk about our fellowship and we talk about the body of Christ and we talk about where we're coming from and we talk about brother Souders and we talk about brother Goodwin and we talk about brother Jolly but a man out there is in darkness. Come on. May God help us. Because we need to light, let our light shine. Jesus told him, he says, when you receive power, he says, you will receive power to be witnesses. And on that day of Pentecost, 3,000 approximately, approximately 3,000 people got added to that Stringy little 120. The Holy Ghost makes a difference. We had a wonderful move here. But this is my conclusion. It's a drop in the bucket. Don't say well hallelujah. You know we got it. Hallelujah. We ain't got enough of it. There's coming a day when the Lord will give power unto the two witnesses and we wouldn't wheel a, roll a wheelchair in full and roll it out back full. We will roll it in full. We will take it back out empty. Oh God, I don't do miracles these days. You got to change your voice when I change mine. 
You know, in my days, I've seen the cripple walk. I've seen tremendous miracles. But the greatest miracles we can ever experience is the conversion of the sinner. How can God take a sinner and make a child of God out of him? So when we leave this meeting, we had a good meeting, but we could have a better meeting. But it's not going to come by the amount of steak dinners we have. See, this book has men like the Apostle Paul planted the churches of Galatia. Four churches. Lystra. Iconium. Derby. Antioch. Then Corinth. Then Colossae. Then Philippi, then Thessalonica, and before he died, Jabla. You see, the devil, his job is to destroy things. That's his job. And when I get up and say, "Well, he got me." He's glad to hear that. Because that's what he started out doing. See, back there in the world when we were just young preachers, you either cast the devil out or the devil cast you out. See, what we do here in North America, sometimes it's like a joke. I've got people in this church that knows how we operated back there in Guyana years ago. How would you like to have someone possessed with teeth marks on their back? That's not in imagination. See, but Murphy is from Guyana. But Sinbad at the back there is from Guyana. He was my neighbor. He was my neighbor. What I'm telling you about, I walked over to the neighbor asking for help. She was asking for help. Because her daughter was possessed. Real stuff. Not fake stuff. Not somebody pretending they got a demon. The real stuff. You either cast it out, or like the sons of Sceva, it cast you out. We need more of his spirit. That's how we started the service this weekend. More of his power. More of his presence. More of the power of God that can unshackle us from sin. And from evil. So I'm glad you're here. See when I talk on these subjects. I get carried away. But Paul was an example. And built the power, most powerful church. But you know the church at Corinth. Accused him that he walked in the flesh. Charismatic movements got into the church. Emotionalism took over the church. And so when Paul walked in, his letters say they are weighty, his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. I wish I could be like Paul. When I'm finished talking, half the people love me, and half hate me, and half wish I never spoke at all. When everybody loves you, woe is you. Okay. Time to quit. You know the greatest example of all is Benny Hinn. <laughs> Depends on what the example is about. I really meant the greatest example for us to follow is Jesus. Despised of men, 
rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And when you have his spirit in your life, it would reflect the same. Amen. Glad you're here today. <coughs> we ask Brother John to come and close his service and send us off for dinner. Brother John, where are you? Oh, there he is. Brother John is the man who the Lord used to start this this assembly here and and it was in Toronto at that time but many many years ago the Lord used brother John and I appreciate his faithfulness see I'm a very strong extreme person and I love you brother John let me not say anything more glad that you're here thank you for coming pray that God give you a safe trip we'll pray that the Saints get a safe trip at home amen, amen. praise God Well, they said every good thing must end. I don't really believe that because I don't believe this is the end of it. I want to say that this meeting is coming rapidly to a close. And by 3.30 in the next 25 minutes, we'd all be heading out to the dining area and some folks will be traveling back. I'd like to say a few things and as we close this meeting off today. First of all, I want to thank the Haitians that attended this meeting, ministers and saints. I wondered at one point in time when I heard some of our North American brothers were not coming, what would happen in the meeting? But it turned out to be a Haitian meeting. I think this was a Haitian meeting. And for years that I've gone to Haiti, I have always appreciated Haiti and the saints I always commended the ministers for their modesty, their tranquility when I attend these ministers meeting in February. And today I want to say thank you to Brother Antoine, Brother Moses and the other brothers who combined their efforts together to put up in hotels over 60 of their saints not putting that responsibility in the local church transport we did not have to worry about and so you don't see that normally I want to say I appreciate that very much this local church do want to say thank you and then the staff of this church we're not a lot of us but the few that labored and worked extremely hard uh, did not have enough time to pray so much but can you move God only by prayer you see he's in control and he will protect his people and I normally hesitate to say the presence of God is in the service because we can be carried away sometimes with emotionalism but at the conclusion of this meeting I want to say we felt a very precious presence of God and I appreciate God for that these songs that we're closing out this meeting with 
how can I ever forget the many a times I got up early in the morning, slip into this church before anyone else was awake, and right here on this second step, I will sit. And when I sit there, I don't have a shopping list, but just a heart of gratitude. I find it very difficult to tell God all the things I want Him to do. But I sat there and appreciated Him. And He has met me many a times while I'm there. I appreciate God for His goodness. I appreciate every one of you coming to this meeting. Every visitor. And those that contributed for the missionary offering. And as we close off this meeting. I relate to the men of this Bible. See this book. Would have been a very slim book. Had it not been. For the many examples of scripture. Not all wonderful. Beautiful examples. But men that were up sometimes. And down sometimes. It made a difference. One of my greatest champions in this book is the Apostle Paul. Oh, I can list a lot of champions. I love Moses. See, what I see in Moses and some of these other men, I don't know how many people see that. How would you appreciate a man like Isaiah that would show up and the first thing he tells you, you have iniquity working in you, an ox is smarter than you, an old donkey is smarter than the children of God. He looks, he says, the whole body is sick, from the priest to the people. See, that's the way I like to see a prophet. Not a good, not an advertisement in the city to telling you come and get rich. But a man that comes to tell you strong words. You know, you read that first chapter of Isaiah. And how can you compare him with the men of today? He said... He says, you rulers of Sodom. Who was he talking to, Sodom? No, he was not. He was talking to the rulers of Israel. But he called them the rulers of Sodom. And he said, you people of Gomorrah. If somebody tells me that, I'll have a problem with that. But I love Isaiah. He ended up being martyred. History tells us they cut him in half with a saw. Who did it? The ungodly? No, apostate religion did it. I love the man like Moses. Who was a prince in Egypt. And the scripture says... He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. An opportunity that every individual would want to hold on to in today's world. To have a politician love you. To have a politician appreciate you. Is what a lot of people want in this world. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And you know the amazing thing about Moses, he says, the scripture went on to say, esteeming the reproach of Christ. You mean Christ in the Old Testament? Yes. 
esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. What a man! See, that's those are the men I love. Now these little cowboys they have on television.